On this episode of the New Home Construction Show, Universal Design and Aging in Place expert Tiffany Dill shares a lot of great information on how to implement Universal Design and Aging in Place features into your home. Plus, she takes us on a tour of the home she recently built to show us many of these details she incorporated into her new home. I'm Dan Asher with the New Home Construction Show, and our mission is to provide you with the tools and information to increase your knowledge of the home building process so that you can confidently take on the home building journey. Hey everybody, welcome to the New Home Construction Show. I'm Dan Asher with the New Home Construction Advisors, and I'm here today with Tiffany Dill, owner of Blue Day 2 Designs, and she specializes in universal design. So uh, first of all, Tiffany, thanks for taking some time with us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank yeah. you for having me. Awesome. Well, we're uh, here in one of her projects that uh, she designed, and we're actually, it's actually your own home. Yes, in my uh, house. Yeah. So how was that process, actually being your own client? It was hard. I would say it's harder to be your own client than it yeah. is to um, work with someone else. It's a lot easier, I think, working with someone else. And I've heard that yeah. um, other people tell me the same thing. Yeah. So. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, this is a new home that you built. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Now, how long ago did you build this home? Uh, we just moved in about a year ago. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Is it after the process everything you imagined it to be? I think so, yeah. It's, um, it's functional, it's livable, and it's visible for all of our guests too, so okay. it makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So part of the reason we're in her home today is so we can talk through some of the design elements that you can put into your home when the time comes. And actually, a lot of these are, are pretty simple things to do that yes. you know people don't realize um, don't really take that much more during the construction process. Right, correct. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and sometimes it's less expensive to yeah. um, integrate up front than it is to do later yeah. and modify or retrofit for your home. Yeah, awesome. And would you say this is something that people need to be thinking about, uh, whether they need those design elements today or sometime in the future? I would say when it comes to integrating universal design, yeah is thinking about um, now and thinking about the future. So a lot of unforeseen things that we don't expect, so like unexpected events that occur, yeah. or someone that has surgery, um, things that we don't think about if someone has a disease that's progressive, yeah. and later in life they're unable to walk or use their arms to reach for things. And so yeah. Universal Design thinks about, it, I like to call it proactive designing, okay. and that's what I call, um, that's what I say that I do. Yeah. It's proactive designing because you're thinking ahead yeah. and you're planning ahead. Yeah, okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, can you kind of just talk a little bit about what universal design is? I think a lot of people have heard the term, but people prob a lot of people probably don't really understand what all it entails. And you're correct. So, um, one of the biggest things about universal designs is the nice thing about it is it's usable. It's a product and a space that's usable by most people um, without any specializations or adaptations that are needed. Whereas when we hear about ADA, which is um, uh, American with Disabilities Act that was established back in 1990, it's basically um, people think of it more as like a physical impairment or someone that is in a wheelchair. Um, but with universal design, we think beyond that. We okay. think of um, your current situation, and we think of, if you're gonna live in your home forever, we think about the future as well. Yeah. And so we incorporate all of those things in universal designs. And simple things, universal designs is easy to use, it's um, flexible across the board, and it's intuitive, it's user-friendly, mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes universal designs um, applicable for most people of all abilities. Yeah, awesome. So your firm, obviously you specialize in universal design, mm -hmm. but you also specialize in aging in place, mm -hmm. inclusive design, yep. uh, also universal design, and you can even do ADA accessible design. Yes, yeah. correct. And um, the biggest difference between ADA and universal designs is that ADA is more recommended for the public and government entities. And so it re it's required basically, they have a standard, a, a document of standards and accessible design. And basically it kind of tells you the standard height for a countertop okay. or how far a faucet should be back so that people can reach it while they're sitting in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, it's also applicable to public transportation okay. and those kinds of things. Whereas universal designs is not really like a standard document. There's no, um, standards and it's not required everywhere. Okay. But ADA with it being required in public spaces, 
With universal designs, it can be customized to your space. And okay. ADA is not required in residential homes. So okay. that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. Um, ADA, I would say, is um, it's great for public spaces so that most people can use it that have you know maybe physical impairments or mobility um, challenges. But with universal designs in a home, more people can use that product or mo yeah. more people can maneuver in your space. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah very cool. And so uh, builders and developers, I know at least locally, haven't really embraced this concept yet. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, or they're somewhat fearful of maybe the costs associated with it. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually you know, one of the people leading the charge and helping to spread the word and, mm -hmm. and get builders and developers on board to do this. You know, what are a few of the reasons that they, they should be under, embracing this? That is a good question. And there are a lot of myths that comes along with it. So you're right about that. Um, one of the things that I like to address to contractors and developers is um, we're looking at a huge population. So part of the population we have now is people aging in place, but we also have people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the housing market right now, it has been reported that about a little over 95% of the homes in the U.S. right now um, only have, that do not have aging in place features or universal design features. So that means if we're projected to have, you know, by 2060, it's projected to be about 98 million people in the U.S. that have wow. to be 65 and older. Wow. And according to the AARP, about 10,000 yeah. people turn 65 a day. Okay. So if you think about those numbers, that's actually the market forecast for developers mm -hmm. and even contractors. So we think about people with disabilities and we think about the projected numbers of people over the age of 65. Okay. And even by 2035, there's going to be more people over the age of 65 than there would be people under the age of 18. Yeah. So if you think about that market there, um, that's your forecast. So I think developers that haven't jumped on board yet mm -hmm. are missing the mark yeah. because more and more people are going to be looking for homes with universal designs or agent in place features. Yeah. And it's really applicable for almost anybody, especially people with disabilities. Yeah. Um, and so people with disability, they'll be able to access the home. Mm -hmm. And then people that are wanting to age in place, they'll be able to access the homes as yeah. well. Yeah. And so I think because of that, um, that's a big um, opportunity for developers. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard more and more people asking for it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that want uh, homes that they don't have to move out of in right. 10 years or, the, you know, they see the time coming, mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, down the road soon. So really for, for builders and developers, you know, it's right thing to do, number one, but additionally, yeah. there's a huge market there right. uh, for people that are, need this today and are going to mm -hmm. continue to need this, you know, soon. Yeah, and some of my clients, um, it, it's hard and it's challenging. Like, I'm uh, consulting on a lot of remodeling yeah. projects. Um, and, you know, a lot of my clients have um, unexpected events, you know, yeah. whether it's a neurological disorder that suddenly, you know, you can't walk anymore, you can't use your arms, or you're completely yeah. dependent, but you don't have wide hallways or wide doorways, and maybe you don't have a bedroom or a bathroom on the main level, yeah. which is very, very important. If you're wanting to age in place, live in your home forever, or if you have someone in your home with a disability, or even thinking about visitors that yeah. have disabilities. So yeah. when my husband and I built our home, we thought about, okay, you know, if we're gonna live in our home forever, that means we need to make sure we have a lot of the simple things, um, especially accessible on the main level. Mm -hmm. Now we have a story and a half home, but we hardly ever use the second floor and it's mainly used for guests. And we can access the first floor um, and do all of our all of our daily needs and basis of daily needs um, it's on the main level. So yeah. we don't have to take the step. Um, a lot of times when I see patients in the hospital and they go home, a lot of times I'll ask, you know, where's your laundry room? Because they'll they live at home alone yeah. and they do their own laundry, or um, they take their showers and their bath, and they have to take the step. Um, the other thing um, that I think about too is like people that have to go down the steps to yeah. do their laundry, you know. Yeah. So having everything on the main level is really accessible for anybody. Um, and then the other thing that my husband and I would think about is, you know, what if we have surgery? Yeah. What if you have knee surgery yeah. or hip surgery? Um, when you think about those things, you're non-weight bearing whenever you have those surgeries. Yeah. And so that means you can't take steps or you can't climb yeah. over a tub or yeah. climb over a threshold. Yeah. Um, so though, with those things in mind is what we kept in the back of our mind when we were building our home. And I um, feel like that's something that I like to share with other people. Yeah. Um, because they're unexpected events, they're unforeseen, yeah. 
things they're unpredictable because we can't predict everything yeah. and you think about you know even a mom who has um, yeah. c-section they can't yeah. take the steps yeah. either yeah absolutely and so you definitely want everything on the main level and um, the other thing that was important to us was um, having at least you know no step to enter the home yeah well because we're on an elevation we're on mm -hmm. a hill yeah we couldn't have um a zero step entry so the one thing that you think about is okay when you want to access your home whether you're a visitor or you live mm -hmm. in your home and you're unable to take the steps then we added a ramp in the back okay and so yeah. okay. that makes it easy for a lot of people to yeah. access our home yeah no that makes yeah. sense and when you were showing me around you know a little bit a little while ago mm -hmm. you've, you've incorporated these elements in the home but you didn't make any sacrifices no you know the home was beautiful and you, you wouldn't really have even know it if you didn't know what you were looking for right exactly yeah. and that's the thing about universal design you know one of the myths is oh my gosh it's gonna look so ugly you know we have grab bars yeah we have a ramp and you know people are gonna think you know i have a disability or you know somebody lives here with a disability or it looks like an institution i feel yeah. like i'm in a nursing home yeah and it doesn't have to look that way yeah. in fact universal design features blend in with the aesthetics of the home yeah and a lot of times people don't even notice it like yeah. they notice they walk into a home that has space yeah. or they walk into a home that they didn't have to take a step up yeah and they're thinking oh my gosh this home is so open, it's so yeah. refreshing, and it's so um, visitable and yeah. so livable and more enjoyable, and I can access things, and I'm not like, you know, my doors aren't banging together yeah. when I'm opening up a cabinet door and it's not hitting something else. Yeah. And so when you think about those things, those are kind of invisible, mm -hmm. but nobody thinks, oh, that was Universal Design. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why Universal Design is kind of invisible and not everybody yeah. will even notice that it's universal design yeah. and it's not just for people with disabilities yeah. it's for people of all abilities and so that's one of the myths and i think the other big myth is the cost which you yeah. kind of mentioned yeah um the cost up front when you build a home is less expensive than when yeah. you remodel um, yeah. a home later on yeah and the reason i say that is because there's been some studies in new zealand they talked about how they actually found a significant difference between all the current homes that they remodeled and all the new homes that they built. It was just very cost effective to build a new home with the user friendly features that they yeah. call. Okay. Um, and so, and then even the World Health Organization pointing that out, it's very cost effective yeah. to build your home in the beginning with universal design features yeah. as opposed to retrofitting or modifying it later in life. And yeah. that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Yeah. And some of the studies will point out that it's 30 to 55 times less expensive okay. wow. to do it now than later. Yeah. So it depends on yeah. you know where you are in the world because yeah. obviously the prices are different everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, not to mention the cost factor, but the aggravation factor. Mm -hmm. If you're building a new home, you're not living in the home why you're doing it versus yeah. a uh, renovation project. Yeah, and we can even talk about the shower for an example. One of the things that comes up in the top of my mind is when we did our walk-in showers, we have walk-in showers on the main mm -hmm. floor. And so when you're building a new home and you do a walk-in shower and you want it to be seamless, um, you don't want any thresholds or anything like that, anybody can just roll in or walk into the shower, whether you have a walker or your wheelchair or um, if you're just hobbling into the shower, anybody can access it. Now, when you do it at the construction and the design point, they drop the floor. Okay. And when you drop the floor, it makes it easier to slope it down mm -hmm. towards the drain, wherever your drain is. Now, if you have done um, a few remodel projects where it's, you can do it, it's feasible, um, it's just a lot easier and less cost effective when you yeah. do it at the beginning. Yeah. But when you remodel, you actually kind of slope up and then you slope back down okay. into the shower which is still it still works it's yeah. still fine um it's still safe to get in without yeah. climbing over anything yeah so those are like that's one example that i can provide okay yeah so you've, you you've got to talk to builders and, and convince them that it's not cost prohibitive uh mm -hmm. it's not that much harder to do right. and, and and part of what you do is you'll sit down with the homeowner mm -hmm. and guide them through the process of how right. to get these elements onto their floor plan right so. and um i find it very important to be an advocate for them because a lot of times um as a business owner and when i work with clients when i look for contractors i've met with a few and um, one of the most important things to me is that they're going to stand behind my client yeah. 
they're gonna um they're gonna you can trust them mm -hmm. and they understand your client's needs and not what they think they need yeah. and so it's very important that you know that first the contractor is on board with the client or with you or whoever's building the home and um i find it very um comforting to know that there is a contractor that you can trust yeah. and that can stand behind you and not stand behind the trades yeah. because they're actually educating they're talking to the trades they're yeah. communicating with the trades and so as um, a design consultant my job is to advocate for my client and make sure all of these um, elements are being integrated into yeah. the plan and the design plan yeah. sometimes clients don't think of um, a lot of those elements either yeah. and so if um, when I work with the client I listen to who they are yeah. what they currently do um, I look at their history and then I also kind of sit back and evaluate um, how they access their space, um, what is needed, and then I also, really important to look at the big picture. Yeah. So I look at the family, I look at that person, who's the caregiver, who's the person that is um, doing certain tasks in the home, yeah. and then you apply all of those things to the design elements of the yeah. home. And so that, to me, is um, critical, and then it's important to advocate for them. So for instance, if you really need grab bars in your bathroom and they do not install um, a backing work yeah. support system um, then I can be there to kind of like make for sure that's done but um, it's really the contractor that's really up front yeah. so making sure they have that yeah. um, connection and the contractor understand that's yeah. what's really important yeah. and so um, I can be there to help guide the process and product selection and that yeah. kind of thing. So it's really a team yeah. effort. It is a team yeah. effort. I actually, um, that's one of the things that I really talk about and um, strongly talk about because yeah. it's not a one man job. Yeah. It's multiple people and I really encourage having a healthcare provider at the table such as mm -hmm. an occupational therapist, myself, yeah. Yeah. a physical therapist or a nurse that understand you know who that person is and then if they do have a disease in the family that's progressive yeah. we can really think ahead about okay this person can walk now yeah. um and they can function in their home now but we want them to function and live in their yeah. home forever comfortably yeah. and enjoy their space too yeah and so that's one of the things that we can do is look ahead a little bit yeah. awesome well, you mentioned a few of the different uh design elements but can you talk just point out some more examples that that people could do in their homes. Yeah. And then we're gonna have an opportunity to see some of these in, in your yeah. actual home. Um, some other examples include wider hallways and doorways. Um, and I will back up a little bit. I, I wanna mention like some of the things that I would recommend now for almost any um, home builder. And those are the things that I've already kind of mentioned. One thing is having a zero step entry into the home, at least one. Um, it doesn't matter where it is, the front, the back, the garage, um, and it can actually blend in with the aesthetics of the home. So if you don't want your ramp noticeable, or if you have to have a ramp and you don't want it to stand out, there are ways to make a ramp that can blend in with the landscape, and I've seen that done beautifully. Yeah. Um, so that is one thing that I would recommend, because then it's visible by other people and not just you. Mm -hmm. um, you can age in place, so if you ever, um, have surgery or if you ever um, have difficulty walking later, then you can have a ramp um, to access your home. The other thing is having um, everything you need on the main level, okay. all of your basic needs. So you always need a shower mm -hmm. and you always need to sleep. So having a bedroom and a bathroom on the main floor is um, very important. That's one of the biggest thing. Um, the other thing is having wider hallways and doorways. Yeah. That's another um, big one that I would incorporate into the design plan. Wider hallways, believe it or not, is um, not just for people that have equipment or in a wheelchair or in a walker or crutches or whatever. Um, but it's also, if you think about it, it's nice to have a wide hallway, don't you think? Yeah. Because if you're moving furniture around, yeah. you really need that wide space. So some people have bulky furniture. And if you think about the older homes that have narrow um, yeah. walkways, it's hard to move things without yeah. you know putting a thing into the wall mm -hmm. and so i think having wider hallways is a big one and wider doorways um one of the things that 
my husband and I wanted was doorways on the main floor that were at least 36 inches wide. Yeah. And mainly just because of the space and you're not so restricted. Yeah. Um, and for the hallway, we wanted it to be at least 48 inches, okay. which is four feet. Okay. And that's plenty of room to move around and two people passing by or um, moving furniture around, stuff yeah. like that. Um, the other thing is with the wider doorways, if you do have equipment or if you're ever in a walker or wheelchair, or crutches, you want enough clearance to get your hands through. And so if someone is wheeling through or on crutches, you don't want to bang your fingers up yeah. on the side of the door yeah. or try to like squeeze through in such a narrow yeah. space. Um, the other thing is door lever styles, so, or lever door styles. Mm -hmm. I would recommend lever door styles um, on all the doors because it's easier to use. You don't have to have a lot of grip. Yeah. And someone that doesn't have a full grasp can just barely you know hit it and they can open the door yeah um same thing for the faucet all yeah. they need to do is just like barely tap it or if they don't even have you know use of their hands or they have poor dexterity you can use an elbow mm -hmm. so you can easily you know use an elbow to open the door same thing if you're carrying groceries yeah you know your hands are full just yeah. get that elbow in and open the door yeah. okay um same thing for the faucet Gotcha. And walk-in showers for sure. Yeah. Walk-in okay. showers is definitely a big one that I would recommend. Yeah. Um, it's, it's less expensive to do at the beginning yeah. um, than it is to try to do it in the in the remod yeah. or remodeling phase. Yeah. Um, and the the other thing inside the shower I would have is a removable shower head on a glide bar. Okay. And because of that, I that is actually applicable for anybody, even children. Yeah. So if you think about your children that are shorter. As yeah. they grow, you can raise up the shower yeah. head so it glides, it can go up and down. Yeah. Now, removable shower heads is so nice because if you are an adult and you want to shave or you know, women want to shave or whatever, you can sit down, remove it, and yeah. rinse. The other big thing is that um, I kick myself in the, um, the rear end about this, but I, am, I don't know why I didn't think about putting removable shower heads in the showers yeah. upstairs. Yeah. I was thinking making the main floor accessible, yeah. don't care about the second floor. Yeah. But now that I'm cleaning showers, yeah. how do you clean them? Yeah, like you take a bucket? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've tried yeah. so many different <laughs> things and then I'm just mad that I didn't put them up yeah. there. So that's an easy fix though. Yeah. You can always add that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are some of the main okay. ones, but there's others that you know I yeah. can point out too. Yeah. Um, and the, I would say in the kitchen, it's good to have you know clearance around the walkway. Yeah. Um, when you're aging in place, you want to think about, okay, aging in place is considering like people that, you know, your vision decreases, your hearing decreases, your dexterity decreases. Yeah. So you think about all those things, your reaching actually decreases too, yeah. and you may have arthritis. So you think about all of those things whenever you're designing a kitchen to make it easier yeah. for someone to age in place in the kitchen, especially for a woman who loves to cook. Okay, yeah. And uh, one of the biggest things is I would put controls, make sure you got appliances that have controls on the front, especially a stove. Yeah. So it's easier to see, easier to reach when you're sitting or standing, um, and then having other items within reach without like having to reach above yeah. really high. It makes it safer too, so they're yeah. not you know likely to stand on a stool yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. Awesome. And, and like like we've already said, these aren't huge hard things to do. Right. They're not even that costly. And the other, you know, reason this is really important is, you know, parents, people are aging parents that yeah. uh, are gonna be visiting them like you've said already, or maybe even living with them down the road. So mm -hmm. people really need to think about this when they're building their next home. Right. And universal design also is inclusive, kind yeah. of is kind of used interchangeably with inclusive design. So I like to think of it as inclusion and sure. not exclusion. Yeah. So when you think about um, even the cultures, yeah. multi-generational families, yeah. you know, maybe families are living together. And so you also have to think about that too. And universal yeah. designs is actually applicable for you know the life okay. across the lifespan. Yeah. But yeah. That, that's awesome. Very cool. All right. So next we're going to walk around and we're going to have an opportunity to see a few of these design elements in your home. Yeah. And the other thing that you know you might not see on on video is like she said, the home just feels. Uh, there's a feeling when you have wider hallways and wider doors, and when people walk into your home, they can't point it out. Right. Yeah, you know, they might not even understand why, but something just feels better, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and yeah. it's all about the experience. So when people experience it, then they want that too. Absolutely. And so up front, when you talk about universal design, a lot of times they're like, 
I don't really know what that is. I don't really understand what that looks like. But when yeah. you put them into that environment, yeah. they want that. And so yeah. a prime example, I've heard so many stories, but one of my personal ones is my grandfather who doesn't want to make changes in his home. And they had a tiny bed bedroom on the main floor and um, a guest bedroom on the main floor and a bathroom. And so um, the bathroom was super tiny, but they've been using that because they couldn't take the stairs anymore to their main yeah. master bedroom and bathroom. And so when he experienced our universal design, mm -hmm. he wanted to take it home. He wanted to imply it or apply yeah. it into his bathroom. And so it was so fun to work with him because I could, um, I recommended a lot of these things that we had here that he really liked. And yeah. so um, those some of those things I can show yeah. um, on the tour. But it, it was a, a rewarding experience too. So yeah. when people feel like they can enjoy their spaces and um, they feel safer, yeah. they can function better. Yeah. Um, you have less stress. That's one thing I forgot. You, it's less stressful. And so yeah. when you implement these um, universal design features in the very beginning, you're actually creating less stress for later. So yeah. if something were to happen, yeah. an unexpected event or um, Asian in place or whatever, then it's less stressful to think about, oh, I have to make these modifications. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. they're just minor modifications, yeah. but they're not going to be major modification. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, cool. Well, let's take a look around. Okay. Right. Thanks. Okay. Let me give you a tour of our kitchen, which has some of the universal design features. And one of the things you may notice right off the bat um, is the clearance in the widthway um, or the walkway in the kitchen between the island and the surround. Um, this allows a lot of space for two people to pass through and more than one person can work in the kitchen. Otherwise, if you have a small narrow space, then not more than one person can work in the kitchen. So one of the features that I like is um, it's a microwave drawer. It's actually good for, um, it's good for kids and it's also good for um, anybody that doesn't want to, you know, reach up high if they can't reach anything. Um, this is easy to reach. So. Um, this is one thing that we like that you just open. The only thing that I do not like about it is you just have to push it to close it back. Um, so it's easy to see when you're cooking in there. So if you're um, making oatmeal or something and you want to see if it's done or not, then you can just look over it. You don't have to lift up and then reach for it and look over the bowl. The other thing that um, I like to point out for people in their kitchen is to have drawers. So when you have large drawers, you can pull these out and you can see over them. And there's not a lot of reaching above the space. Also, um, for especially if anybody's aging in place, drawers are really nice because if you have arthritis or if you don't wanna you know, do a lot of reaching with your shoulders and that kind of thing, and heavier items too, you definitely want lower, um, preferably probably the waist level, but you don't wanna do a lot of reaching and bending. So drawers are actually really nice. The other, feature that I like to point out is a couple of things. One is the pot holder filler um, or a pot filler and basically it just allows you to um, pour the water into your um, your pot while you're cooking instead of just trying to carry it back and forth to the sink. Now granted you do have to carry that big pot back to the sink to drain it but um, it does uh, take less of a step for carrying a pot full of water. Um, the other thing is having controls in the front of your oven or your um, stove top. Um, this is an induction range and I actually really like this because if you if you have a family and you have young kids, this they do not burn their hands on this. So you can actually, it all requires magnetic um, pots and pans. So if you don't have anything magnetic on here, such as your hand, it will not burn your hand. And so it's the touch of the button that accidentally turned it on. Um, so you can, it's pretty contrasting, the colors are good contrast, and um, you can kind of scroll through and then turn on your pot, and it boils really fast um, within seconds if you put it on the boil mode. And then, um, and you also, when you remove the pot after you're done, it doesn't burn your hand either. So it's, uh, I actually like this because it's safe too. Not only easy to use, but safe. So the other thing is having, um, Oven's low enough to reach into, so um, that way you're not reaching over. This part, you know, obviously wouldn't be accessible for someone that's sitting, but this is a good height for someone that's um, sitting that wants to work in the kitchen. The other thing I like to address too, if someone has fatigues really quickly, um, you want to have areas in the kitchen where you can sit down and work. 
So whenever you have um, low endurance or you're fatiguing, then you can have an area on your island and uh, prepare all your food in one spot and then you can stand up and cook and it allows you to do more um, without standing the whole time or walking around the whole kitchen. And just to show you a little bit of space here, so you can open up this kitchen door and you can still walk around. So nobody's kind of bumping into each other here. And the last thing I wanna point out um, with the kitchen is if you notice these countertops are not glossy and um, part of Universal Designs is including lighting and things like that. But having honed countertops, especially if you have a lot of windows or lights in your home, um, it reduces the glare or indirect glare. Um, that's really important for someone that may have migraines or maybe a child with autism that is very sensitive to light. Um, it's important to consider home countertops wherever you're gonna have a lot of lighting in some of the rooms. And so lighting is another factor to include in universal designs as well. So as we move into the hallway, you'll notice um, without, you can't notice it without measuring tape, but the hallways are at least 48 inches wide. So it's plenty of space to maneuver around. There's plenty of space to um, move furniture or if you're hauling large um, equipment or furniture around the hallways. The other thing is wide stairways too. So we added wide stairways in the garage to access the basement so that we can haul like camping equipment or bikes and stuff like that up and down the steps without banging into the wall. So it allows you more space to maneuver things around. So as we walk through here, you'll see the space um, between the hallways. This side is our guest side. The guests access this um, area and we made this side accessible for our guests. So grandparents, um, our parents, and families that have disabilities and guests that have disability, they would be able to use these rooms. So this is a guest bedroom. We made it a double door, so it's a wider entry. Um, we actually used my great grandmother's doors from the 1900. So we left it as is and just combined them together to make one big entrance into our um, guest bedroom. And you can kind of see as you're walking through how there's plenty of space to walk around the bed and you'll want that space, especially if you have a walker or, um, or a wheelchair. And um, so there's plenty of space for them to move around and to put any um, suitcases or anything like that when they're visiting. All right, so now we're gonna come on around to the bathroom. So we'll go this way. We made this bathroom accessible from the mudroom and we also have an entrance into the bedroom as well. So it's kind of like a, a flow through bathroom where you can just kind of walk through. Now in the bathroom, this is more of an accessible bathroom for our guests. Um, we have the countertop low so that if anybody was sitting, they could still access um, the sinks and the controls. We have lever handles that you can just like basically push up and then the water comes out. You don't have to grab onto anything. Um, and as you walk in here, there's a little bit more space right here. Now this bathroom may not be completely ADA compliant, but as I mentioned, ADA is only for public spaces, so it's not required for residential home. So for residential homes, you can customize where you would like to install your um, accessories, especially grab bars and things like that. And so, and here we have plenty of space, but then when you get to the shower, it's actually a walk-through shower. And we have, um, basically there is no lip into the shower. We have a grab bar for anybody that needs it for stability. Um, we also have a shower chair that we have around for anybody that needs to sit while they're showering. And as you can see, the shower head is on a glide bar and it's a removable shower head. Um, so you can actually arrange this up and down. So you can move this down if someone is shorter, such as a child or someone that's sitting, and then you can raise this up if they're taller. Um, the nice thing about removable shower heads, I love having this to clean the showers. So you can reach all the way back here and all around the walls whenever you're cleaning your shower. So the grab bar is pretty much at um, almost a standard height and um, because we have different guests that come in and out. And um, as I mentioned, we put a shower chair in the back whenever guests come in and they need to sit. <clears throat> 
So the other thing we have is a, this is a little bit different. Um, most people do not know about this yet, but um, it's called a toilet paper assist bar. Um, I would only recommend this for somebody that just wants to kind of have some help to stand up. Um, it's sturdy enough, it's on um, a stud, so it's just like a grab bar. It has to be on a support um, stud system or um, in the walls. And basically, if they needed more surface area to push up, like with their forearm or their elbow, I would actually recommend a fuller grab bar. But you can get those in any styles, contemporary, traditional, any color that can blend in with the aesthetics of your room and the style of your room. So this is a bidet and um, very hard to get used to. I actually just wrote a blog about this. Um, so you can read about um, any product reviews that I talk about on my blog at www.bluedaytodesigns.com and the nice feature about the bidet um, a lot of people have a hard time getting used to it because you're not used to a bidet um, so the one thing is though we've had a lot of guests over and I would say a handful of our guests had gone home and purchased a bidet <laughs> so one of the things that I like about this there's different features on here that you can have a feminine wash which is you can adjust the aim of the nozzle. It also has a kids setting, um, and it also has a dry setting, a cleansing setting, and an auto setting. You can also put it on power economy mode, and um, it also has a seat warmer. That's probably my favorite part. <laughs> so the bidet is easy to use, and you just push the button whenever you're done. Um, the nice thing is the seat, you know, they self-close, so they don't slam down whenever you're cleaning or if you wanted to close the seat. But the bidet is actually really nice for um, aging in place as well. So if you have arthritis or if you have um, limited use of your upper extremities, um, I've known people that have been in car accidents where they broken almost all the bones in their body and they're going home basically fully casted like right arm, left arm, and le right leg, left leg, and you have to rely on somebody to wipe. So the bidet gives you a little bit more of an independency um, to not rely on somebody to wipe you while you're going to the bathroom. So it actually does the cleansing and the drying and everything. So all you gotta do is sit on it, push a button, and then let it do its thing, and then you're done. So I'm gonna bring you back out here into the mudroom. Um, we have pocket doors on our, um, a lot of our doors on the main level to allow more space. Now, one of the things I do not like about pocket doors, if I'm working with clients um, that are considering pocket doors, is I just always try to make people aware that when you have a pocket door, the wall that the pocket door is in, um, you are not gonna be able to put grab bars or towel bars or anything like that on that wall because it is a thin wall and it's got a frame. Now, you can still, do that you just have to add an extra wall in front of the frame so your wall is going to be thicker you can do that so you can still have a pocket door but just if you have this space then you can add another additional wall to add the studs for the support so a lot of our doors especially all the rest of our doors that are not pocket doors have levers on them and as i mentioned if you have poor dexterity or you know you're um, having a little bit of weakness in your hand or you do not have a full grasp to actually grab a knob and turn it, um, all you do is just pull on this and then it pops open. Um, it makes it a lot easier for someone who is unable to grasp a doorknob or turn it. That makes it a lot easier to open. Um, you can also use your elbows if you need to, um, if your hands are full or something like that. So that's pretty um, functional for a lot of people. And um, even if you didn't have hands at all, you can still use a forearm or your elbow to open the door for lever door styles. I also recommend lever styles for faucets too. It makes it a lot easier to use. Okay. Okay, now we are outside. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do not have a um, zero step entrance because we're on a hill. So we added our zero step entrance in the back by adding a ramp. Now this ramp is not ADA compliant and I would recommend that um, if you need to install a ramp for it to be ADA compliant because it's a lot easier to use the ramp and um, they require a certain uh, ratio 
per slope. So it's easier to use it if you do have room for a full ADA compliant ramp. Now we, we're limited on space here, so we made it a little bit steep, but it's still functional by all of our guests who are in wheelchairs, walkers, and canes, and that kind of thing, and they can still use this. Now, I like to call this universal design because this is um, can be used by all users. And so you have steps here for people that can still use the steps, or if someone wants to use the ramp, they can use the ramp. Now, the only thing that's missing here are railings. We don't have railings installed yet, but it's very important to have railing for um, stability, balance, and safety. The other thing I want to point out with the steps is you notice the contrasting ribbons. The contrast is great, especially if you have, if your concrete is all one color, it makes it hard to see your steps. So when you have steps that are, um, that are one color, then it's nice to add contrast. And that is part of universal design too. You can add contrast in your bathroom, in the shower, um, to make it easier to see the shower. You can add contrast on the edge of the steps um, and different things like that. And um, the steps are long, so it makes it easier for someone with a walker. If they do want to take the steps, they can lift the walker up and then they can still walk on the steps. So um, the step, this ramp and stairs is pretty universal for a lot of people. That was awesome. Thank you so much for showing us around and I know that everyone's really going to enjoy those tips that you gave them. Thank you. It was yeah. my pleasure. I really cool. enjoy um, showing the use of all the space and how yeah. we can make spaces easier to yeah. use for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're about to build a home or you're building a home or you're doing a remodeling project or you live in an existing home and you're, you're considering doing some of these ideas, um, how do people connect with you to learn more? They can um, find me on, we have a website, it's www.bluedaytodesigns.com and I say number two, okay. not T-W-O. Um, we also have a Facebook account, it's Blue Day 2 Designs, and we also have Blue Day 2 Designs on Instagram as well. Okay. And um, my husband and I are actually about to launch a podcast cool. about things we knew, wish we knew about building a new home. And they also, we also talk about um, universal designs and cost saving strategies okay. and stuff like that. Cool. And um, it's not launched yet, but it's called Here's the Deal, D-I-L-L, -L, not deal. Other people spelled it wrong, so it's Here's the Deal okay. on the podcast. Will that be on uh, Apple iTunes or whenever that launches, where will that be? It'll probably be on Apple iTunes okay. and YouTube. Cool. Yeah. And it, again, talk about universal design, but What's going to be really cool is, you know, they just, as we mentioned, they just built this home. So you're going to be talking about all the things that you, um, like you just said, like you wish you would have done or, or mm -hmm. have known prior. Things cool. that we lived through, things we learned, and things yeah. that we now want to share. Yeah. And, and also, you're very good at finding great deals mm -hmm. as, it, as far as finishes go for your home as well. You're going to be talking about a lot of that, how people can find, you know, great light fixtures at a good cost and all that good stuff. Right, yeah. Okay. And universal design also includes um, assistive technology. That's okay. one thing that cool. um, I failed to mention. But assistive technology, we'll talk about technology on the okay. podcast as well. But cool. that includes like voice activating systems and um, having access to your um, your thermostat and everything okay. from your phone to be able to make your home more more green and then a little more economical yeah. too, it's cost yeah. savings, but yeah. Okay, well perfect. Well, be sure to follow on Facebook and Instagram, that way they'll know when the podcast launches yes. and then you can subscribe and then, you know, driving to work, you can learn more. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Awesome, well thanks again, this has been great. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.